So as I said at the start, on the stage we have Singh or Lal or many other names that he's known by. I like to call him now the curator. <laughs> Danny, Alex, Chris and Hannah. But these aren't the only people involved in this film. So if you would do me a favour, if you are involved in this film, would you get to your feet now, please? Just stand up. Woo! Woo! Come on. I know there's some people Come in on, here. Come on, everybody in here. Well done, everybody involved. Thank you very much for your contribution. I'm sorry I couldn't get 25,000 people on a stage. So <laughs> let's talk about this film and let's start off by talking to the curator. Explain to the audience how Video Shot Tales of Terror began. It's uh, quite a difficult one. Can you hear me? First yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if you're aware of a film fest, horror film fest, Horror, horror and Sea. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Paul Cockgrove run it, and I've, I've been going for a few years, and he's asked for some help in terms of promoting it, so I suggested we did a, a fake video shop like the one we have outside. And from doing that, I've, I've got to know lots of stars and directors, because they provide VHS covers for me. And did that for about a year or two, and we got talking, it would be great to do a film based around a VHS shop. I think it was Sam Mason Bell, Tom Rutter, Martin Payne, and Andrew Elias, who did the numbers. We got talking, it'd be great to do a VHS then, and then I thought, actually, let's do this. So we can got, got some ideas together. And from Horror on Sea, I looked at all the people who I really liked their work. Like, for example, did MJ over there. I love his work. If you see me come. <laughs> Mr. Fausti, you should be up here. Woo! <laughs> Woo! Ice cream on the beach. Alex. Yeah. Sam Mason Bell. If you've seen... Lonely Hearts, I suggest you watch that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. So we got involved, and literally everyone I asked, I thought Danny would be a great lead, and I asked her, and she didn't tell me. Nine fell in the hole. Yeah, <laughs> Martin, who was the proprietor. So from there, we got a plot. We thought actually we'd do a little Indiegogo, a fundraiser, and it kind of escalated, and now here I am. Excellent. Danny. When did you get involved in the project? And how on earth did you end up in so many different... <laughs> so I actually originally blame Alex. <laughs> it's your fault. I am blameable. So years and years ago, I did a film called Ice Cream on the Beach. And I was meant to be a cameo. And that was it. I was meant to be done. And then I went to... Actually, oh, maybe I should blame Paul Cockgrove. Because we went to Horror on Sea, and then Alex was like, oh, well, I kind of want you to be more in the feature. And then the character I play, she's an actress, and this is how... So Paula Valentine from Ice Cream on the Beach has like, made her way into Video Shot Tell the Terror. It's not me. I don't get booked to play anything. Now she gets more roles than I do. <laughs> so like, Paula Valentine is a character of her own that gets booked for all this. She's actually spanned three different film producer, film companies' movies. Um, Tony Modern somewhere, I, I was the Witches of the Sands, the 72 hour movie. Um, <laughs> she's in that too, so like three film companies, so yeah, so it's not me, it's her. <laughs> and Alex, I think so much responsibility here is on your shoulders. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I take responsibility for most of the depravity, at least. <laughs> no, surely that's um, Tony. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he should. Um, no, um, I mean, originally, Lau um, spoke to me about, like, his films coming on board, and, and we came up with Mary Whitehouse. And then uh, Lau really graciously helped us out a lot on our film Mosaic that we shot through 2021. And sort of did pictures for us and then very graciously let us use his house. And, and when we were there, mentioned, uh, would we be interested in doing the wraparound? And I said, yes. And, and, and basically, Lau was really accommodating with all my stupid ideas and made a lot of my stupid ideas They're better. Stupid <laughs> <laughs> Most of them are on screen, but you know, he, you know, made, made a lot of those stupid ideas better. So we, we came on board and we also did the wraparound and just kind of generally 
it, it became more of a collaboration between us and you know I, I mean uh, probably to Lau's, Paul Lau's detriment I'd message him most days about video shop stuff and, do you do and that, that too? I, I do that yeah too. man they're probably like 11 at night because I have no filter with that stuff uh, <laughs> yeah, my wife is wondering why I'm always on my who, phone who is <laughs> it's just me <laughs> it's just me <laughs> yay <laughs> half free <laughs> Yes. <laughs> it's just me messaging him going saying, oh, how can we flay this person? <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's how I got involved. Chris, uh, so where did uh, Red Lip Moon, the story come from? So Red Lip Moon, um, Sam Mason Bell, who uh, is a bit of a legend in the indie film scene, I'm, I'm pretty sure you've all probably seen a film by him or, or know of him. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. Credit where credit's due. Come on, people. Yeah, so Sam's, yeah, Sam's been making films for, for the last, like, what, 12, 13 years now um, under, the, under the company Trash Arts. And he basically came to me and he was like, dude, I've, got, I've been asked to do a segment with, uh, with Sing Lao. And I was like, all right, cool. And he's like, yeah, I'm thinking about, like, uh, I've got this feature script. Because Sam's got a feature script. I don't know if everyone knows this or if it's common knowledge yet, but it's called Lust for Life. And that's where the character of Ivy, played by Bella Rich, came from in, uh, in that one. Yes, she is. And yes, she is, right out there. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, he came to me and he was like, yeah, I've got, a, I've got an idea for this kind of like detective character. And I'm like, detective, you say? Yes, okay, go on. And he's like, well, I don't know if you'd want to play it. And I'm like, yes. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yeah, so um, yeah, 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 we kind of got down to writing it. And he was like, yeah, I, I, I just, I need, it, I need it more noir. And I'm like, okay, cool. Like, you want to sit down and kind of like trying to write some of the dialogue out a bit more, you know, kind of like flashed out a bit more. And then he was like, yeah, okay, cool, yeah. So we did that together, and then he was like, okay, perfect, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll go and shoot it. We'll get it done. So uh, I think we shot it over two, three days. And uh, yeah, yeah, just literally, we just, we just rolled and rolled and rolled, and, like kept going through the night and everything, and, and did what we needed to do to get it done. And the original cut, I think, was about 24 minutes. So the original cut was a little bit different to the one that you saw here tonight, because we had to try and condense it down to get it in with the, uh, the runtime. But yeah, it was yeah, an awesome experience. Loved playing... Uh, like a, a bit more of a, a noir character, you know, cold and stoic. Excellent. And Hannah, how much uh, involvement did you have in the development of your character? Uh, it's mostly all me. I'm naturally quite stroppy and sullen. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know. But we love her. Yeah, we yeah. 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 It was just like, oh yeah, action. Oh. So like, I think I probably pulled a muscle rolling my eyes too much. And, <laughs> Like groaning, but yeah, you know, it was good fun. Um, yeah. You just need to give you, uh, what was that drink you had earlier? I've never seen anyone so happy in my entire life. What was that drink that Alex gave you earlier? Oh, oh bubble tea. Yeah, tea. yeah, excellent. I love the reaction. Right, I'm not going to bore you with my crap. Let's talk to some of the people in the audience because I'm sure we've got lots and lots of questions out there. Come on, let's see some hands. Right, right in front here. <coughs> Um, man in your film um, a few years ago and um, I'm just wondering where does it come from or what kind of dealings you had with this man to satirise him so savagely it's Benny Southport in the house there he is look where's, oh, where's Benny a stranger, genius hi hi yeah. what was the question sorry right okay so I'm just saying that a few years ago I met this man and I'm pretty sure it's your Southport or you know <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, man is based on, and I was just wondering what uh, you, you must have been dealt such hard cards to satirize him so savagely. Um, <laughs> uh, first of all, no comment, but secondly, <laughs> someone we know di maybe did, possibly. And I just thought, well, you know, he's a scumbag producer. This not not this guy. The, no. the character on screen is a scumbag producer. And uh, maybe maybe this guy that you're talking about, I don't know who he is, but he fit the bill. So, <laughs> um, and thirdly, no comments. So. <laughs> but, but, but we love Benny. Woo! And the producers would just like to say that Benny Southmore is very fictional, not based on any pre-existing person. Benny Southport is nothing like the person he was based no, on. No, he's not based on <laughs> any, he's not based on a person. He's not many based on a person. Many know who he's based on, but we've many, never Many divulge. people may assume who he's based on, but he's not based on a we real will human never, being. We will never no, divulge it's just, a, he's just <laughs> a fictional character. Of course, of course, yeah, yeah, definitely. Well done, Alex, well done. Yeah. <laughs> so some hands over here somewhere. 
firstly, congratulations, guys. It's absolutely brilliant. Thank you for the great entertainment. Quick question. How are you like, Steve? Has yeah. Sam Langley seen it? <laughs> <laughs> and if so, has he contacted you? Because the Evil Dead segment was just bang. Uh, um, uh, I, I mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, you know, I, 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 when when Lau um, uh, asked us to come on board, like Tis Films to come on board, uh, the, the original thing was like about ratings and things, and and, and literally within the day, I thought, ah, oh, it should be like an Evil Dead thing with Mary Whitehouse, because that's how my brain works. And <laughs> my my brother, who I started doing films with when I was very young, Max, uh, helped me out with it. And we love Evil Dead, and yeah, but uh, I, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't think uh, I don't think Sam Raimi's knocking on our door. I hope he doesn't, because we're all trying to sue us. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, it was a love letter, and I'm, I'm glad please people have appreciated it. Yes. 100%. Yeah. Thank you. So much, when did Lawrence get involved? How, how did you get him involved in the project? Because, I mean, that's sausage scenario. Oh. <laughs> um, so... I mean, Lau wanted a name, uh, and uh, originally, yeah, well, well, yeah, Lau wanted a name, and, and, and we thought about Lawrence, I think, and, and we always had that character, and we, we expanded it. So, like, when it, when it wasn't Lawrence, it was a guy buying a hot dog, and we decided, <laughs> oh, well, let's make it an actor so he can be a bit pompous, and we can also uh, get him to... Uh, while we've got him for the day, paint him green, make him a, a toad, and do my toad the toad thing, which the toad the toad thing is like an ongoing thing. Well, I, originally the Myco guys were... It's MJ's fault. Yeah, it's MJ's <laughs> fault because they were, they were looking for a new like, villain for their, for their films and they, they did like a, a sort of competition. And I stupidly was like, oh, chode the toad. And, uh, <laughs> so, and oh, I was I like, I was determined that we had to put it... Is- Brilliant though, he's on set. Yeah. How long was he? Oh man, he. I mean, he. Uh, where does he live? Uh, he lives up north somewhere. somewhere. In the he north. Yeah. yeah. So he he got there, and I was like, "Hi, you're all right. Hurry up." And then we filmed with him, painted him green, chopped his head off, and he was off again. <laughs> I said, on the day they were filming, we were filming two different bits of different films on the same day. Yeah. And I've worked with Lauren, Lawrence millions of times, but like, we're there. And he's like, oh, hi, Danny, I'm green today. And I'm like, oh, hi. And we just literally cross paths. And it's like, he just got on with his thing. And he just, he just smashes whatever and just gets on with whatever you make him do, right? I mean, it's so Which, good. that was a lot. Danny, yeah. it was so good. It was we really, we yeah. We recommended him to Fausti over there. He's and he, he was worried about getting an actor for, was it? Keep an eye out for Burnt Flowers. I'm going to mention the name. It's, it's Fausti's feature. Woo! Fat, right, did you see him that as well? Right, Sarvi? Yeah, so. Yeah, so. I know he's very top secret about his films, but Burnt Flowers with Lawrence Harvey. Danny might be in it, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, he so is a very good character in that called Bridger as well. Yeah, Bridger, the, uh, yeah. the, 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 the security guard, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think next project is. Video Shop Tales of Terror 2, I think we started the last round. So, yeah, it's, 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 it's not a secret, There's the second one will be in about a year and a bit or so. Is that right, Alex? Isn't three yeah. happening? Yeah. I well, heard three was happening. There's, there's, there's yes, uh, Video Shop Tales of Terror, Lust and Revenge, and we may have another director here on the, the yeah, reluctantly Spence, on the panel. Spence is involved in the second one. What about Pick and Mix? <laughs> and Pick and Mix. Um, so I, I, I thought I saw another question up there somewhere today. So it's a three-part question. First question, uh, brilliant. We, we obviously saw a lot of different stories. We felt the impact of the different directions. Now, can we expect a feature length of like the combination of all you guys? The second part... Would you go with one particular character? Third part, now where do you see West Ham finishing this season? <laughs> 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 what I'm league are West Ham in now? <laughs> in terms of features, Alex, any ideas? Uh, well, I, th- I think Benny Southpaw has some legs. 
Benny Southport has a, probably a trilogy happening. There you go. Benny, Benny, we've got <laughs> Benny, we've got Paula, we've got no, the wanky Mr. Daniel. Paula's yeah. dead. Paula, Paula dies, she comes back. That's the. That's <laughs> the. Uh, the HS repairman will definitely be back in the in the second <laughs> film. Possibly, and a tease for you guys, possibly in space. <laughs> Do we have any other questions? Hello. Um, what was your that. selection process for the actual films? Did you approach the directors themselves oh. with an idea of the genre in particular, or did you have like two oh, right. genres in mind to select? And for the second film, uh, do you have any particular influence in the type of films that uh, are going into it, or are you leaving it up to? Good question. Right. Good. First of all, in terms of the directors here, they've all been selected because I genuinely love some of their work, if not all of their work. <laughs> I think, I mean, to name the directors, obviously, Alex with Ice Cream from the beach, if you see that, you're going to love that. Uh, Sam Mason Bell, I mentioned Lonely Hearts, the Millennial Killer. Fausti, I've seen everything he's done. <laughs> Sorry, and <laughs> that was it. Ingress Tapes, Zaff. There's some stuff I haven't seen. Exit, which is his feature, which was absolutely <laughs> amazing. Very talented. Uh, Tom Rutter, I saw Dana Strange, <coughs> Bella and the Witch Elm. MJ, who's a veteran of the game, he's, he's more or less done everything. I mean, like, he's got the Slasher House franchises and obviously Bandits the Dollhouse. He's, he's a, an accomplished filmmaker as well. And you had um, Andrew Elias, who's a relative newcomer, and he did The Numbers which I forced my wife to watch and, I said, oh, <laughs> and literally she, she did like it I think so <laughs> those six directors I genuinely liked or loved their work and I asked them please can you do a bit for me and luckily they all said yes so <laughs> and we're here now because of this and in terms of selection process for the second one very similar I mean people who I like their work Spencer their fools no reasons <laughs> and, uh, I'll, I'll, I'm not going to mention the other lineups, but in terms of, I'll give them, the second one is going to be more, uh, not genre based, we're going to do genre based for the third one, it's just the whole aesthetic, in terms of, I'll make sure they've seen this, it's got the element of fun, twist in the tail, that's the kind of stuff we like, and the third one is, we're going to be specific genres for directors. The selection process, just someone we think is really good and I hope you saw something that you liked up there today. Hey.